we are gonna compare the brand new M3 Max against the M1 Max. Both of these are specced out to basically be the same. They are fully specced out units with the exception of four terabyte storage instead of eight terabyte storage. So when I purchased this M1 Max a few years ago, I bought it fully specced out with a four terabyte storage and same with the M3 Max here. This is fully specced out with the four terabyte storage. Of course, this laptop is at a disadvantage because it's a few years old now, so it's had a little bit of wear and tear on it. But I wanted to see is the M3 worth the upgrade for me. There's a few things to consider here. Of course, the M3 is a full two generations newer because I didn't go with an M2. I jumped that and went for the M3. Now, a few years later, I felt like my M1 was plenty powerful enough that I did not need to mess around with the M2. So for those of you that are out there that have an M1 and you're considering an M3, hopefully this video will help you. We're going to run it through a whole bunch of different tests. But the first thing we're going to do is unplug the power you can see that both batteries are at 100%. We've got 100% here at both batteries, and I'm going to unplug them now, and we will run every test off of battery. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually restart these systems, and so I want to see which ones will power up first. So we're just going to restart both of them and set it to not reopen windows and hit restart. Now, both of these systems are the same. I used the migration assistant to add everything that I had on the M1 onto the M3. So both of these computers here are completely the same, but they're configured as I would use them. They have all of the software that I would use. Everything is loaded there and the hard drives are really pretty full. They're more than three quarters of the way full of applications, video files that I edit, photos and all that stuff. M3 has already restarted, which is crazy. And the M1 is still in the shutdown process, or at least from what I can see, I haven't gotten the tone yet. Nothing has restarted over. Oh, there we go. We got it. And so now let's see how fast this starts up. You can see there are all sorts of applications that are firing up on this end because there are apps that I run that are either menu bar apps or applications that I just have starting up. M1 has started up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close pretty much all of this stuff with the exception of the menu apps. I'll just minimize those, but any applications that opened up such as Notion or Spotify and stuff like that, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down. So we're still starting up over here. You can see how much slower everything is loading compared to the M3. The M3 was banging through all of that startup procedure with all of these different apps that I have running here. And a lot of these are still thinking about it. it says my internet connection dropped or something like that. I don't know. I'm just having a few additional setbacks over here on this side. So let's go ahead and quit out of all of these. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is run a Geekbench test. So let's open up Geekbench and Geekbench is open. We're going to run a CPU test first and here we go starting and we have the counter here and I'm going to have to take some notes just so that I can keep track of what is what with as far as time frames and stuff go. So, so far looking at these side by side, it, it looks like the M3 is pulling ahead a little bit, but not drastically. It is starting to jump ahead now, but we'll see how this goes as the clock continues to run. Now, looking at the progress, we could tell that the M3 is starting to pull ahead. Now, the reason that I decided to purchase an M3 is not because my M1 is slow at all. My M1 Max is fast enough for all the work that I do, whether it be photo editing, video editing, web browsing, building websites, all of the stuff that I do, I can do on the M1. The main reason is that with a bit of time gone by now, the M1 is getting older and the value of this device is going down. And so if I want to have any reason 
resale value at all out of my M1. I feel like it makes sense to sell it right now and go with the M3, but that's only if our performance really makes a big difference. The cost and price has to be justified, right? All right, so Google Chrome is opening and we have a 3054 single core and a 21437 multi-core. And we've still got the M1 going over here, but should be done any moment. All right, so we're seeing some big differences here. On the M1 Max, we have 2425 as the single, and the multi-core is 12,810. And so we're not quite double the performance when it comes to multi-score on the M3, but pretty darn close. So that's a huge difference in performance. And really the M1 and the M3 is what Apple chose to compare when they announced the M3. They were comparing all the performance of the M3 to the M1, so this is really interesting to me. So now we're going to run a GPU test, uh, testing Metal in Geekbench. So far, as full as the tests go, they're taking about the same amount of time. I think Geekbench really tests things for a certain amount of time and tests how much it's able to process. And so how fast one test finishes versus the other, I don't think is a big enough indicator of what has more performance or less performance. I think it really just comes down to the score, not the elapsed time. All right, so both devices have finished over on... Oh, that's a pretty decent di uh, difference, but I would say maybe not as big of a difference as I was expecting. On the M1, we have 119,324, and on the M3, 153,899. That's still a pretty big difference. Maybe not as big as I thought it would be, but nonetheless, that's a pretty impressive score. All right, so next we're moving on to a Premiere Pro project. This is actually a full video that I edited and uploaded to my photography channel. And so we're going to render this out, but let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side opening of this project. Both of these projects are exactly the same. So let's see which one is going to open faster and be ready to go. And then we'll do a render test. All right, so the M3 is finished and ready to go. We're still waiting on the M1. And we have all assets loaded and everything here on the M3, as you can see, all lower thirds and special effects. We had a notification from Clean My Mac over on the right hand side saying that it thinks that Premiere Pro had hung on us. And I get that message sometimes on this M1. And the project is up on the M1, but we still have some assets loading here that have not loaded. It doesn't look like we have our assets fully loaded on this project yet. So we're waiting for that to take place. Okay, we're ready to export both of our projects. We are exporting to the downloads folder and we are exporting at YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD. So let's go ahead and get to that export button and click export. Remember that we are on battery power and we are gonna see how long it takes us to export. So, so far, and maybe a little concerning, we have the M1 pulling ahead. The M1 shows a remaining time of about nine and a half minutes while the M3 seems to be increasing and is around 16, 15 minutes. This is a little weird. This is not what I would have expected in this side-by-side -side test. And when I originally rendered this project out, I feel like it didn't take that much additional time. So really interesting to me what's taking place right now. But now over here on the M1 side, we see the time start to climb a little bit. We're now up to 10, almost 11 minutes as the time climbs. And we are decreasing on the time over here at around 12 and a half minutes left. So it'll be really interesting to see where we actually end up when this is done. Now I'm hearing the fans starting to spin up on both of these devices. They really started to spin up around the same time. And to be completely honest, the M1 is a bit louder. So I pulled up MX Power Gadget so that we could take a look at how each of these devices are performing as they're doing their hard work right now. Remember they're on battery power, both of them. So far it seems like the M1 might be a little further ahead than the M3. But looking at wattage and wattage usage here, we could tell that the M3 seems to be working a little bit harder as far as its power consumption goes. I've seen the CPU jumping up a little bit higher than what we would see on the M1. The GPU power usage seems to be around the same. When we look at the frequency, I see the frequency for the efficiency cores sometimes jumping up close to two, hovering in the one and a half range and jumping around. Now we're over two a little bit, but over here on the M1, I see that one kind of hovering in the mid ones and I haven't seen that jump up into two yet. As far as performance cores go, performance cores 
as well. Uh, nothing seems to be really just pinned at any percentage. It seems to be jumping around quite a bit. Now looking at temperatures, we can tell that the M1 is a bit warmer. We're at like 92 Celsius right here. We're at 88. Uh, 86 and so we're running uh, on our core averages a little bit cooler over here on the M3 than we are on the M1 and also on the GPU we can see the GPU is like 91 92 over here we've seen it at about 83 84 over here so the M3 is definitely running cooler than the M1 now looking at the overall utilization percentages we can see that the M1 seems to be utilizing more efficiency core than we are utilizing over here. Now, these are just percentages. And of course, there are different configurations here because of the generations, the M1 versus the M3. There's more cores over here. This has four efficiency cores to the two that are over here. This has 12 performance cores to the eight that are over here. And then, of course, this has 40 GPU cores to the 32 over here. But the numbers seem smaller over on this. Well, now they, they jump around a bit. But on an average, the numbers over here on the M3 seem to be a bit less. And so it's interesting to me just to see those numbers jump around. It's really hard to quantify what those numbers mean, especially as they're jumping around and everything. But if you look at the graph as the graph starts to build, we can see the graph on the M1 is substantially higher as far as the utilization goes with some big spikes as well. And then if we look at the power consumption over here, you can see that the M3 started out pretty strong as far as power and is dropping off. And we are now a bit lower than we were originally. And even though we are seeing a drop off over here on the M1 as well, that drop off doesn't seem to be as substantial. So we're about halfway through this project render, which is a pretty good sized project. This overall video I believe is about 24 minutes in length. And this is all high resolution footage that's captured on the camera that I'm looking into now, which is a Sony FX3 that runs into an Atomos, which means that is ProRes footage that's being captured. And then there are lots of clips from the above camera, which is a Sony FX30. And that is not capturing in ProRes, that's capturing in Sony's 4K codec. So let's do a battery check and see where we are at. Right now we are at 90% battery with the M1 and we are at, boy, that just jumped down to 89% battery on the M3. I thought it was higher than that, but it jumped down to 89%. And so the M3 right now battery is trailing behind the M1 that is several years old at this point. This is interesting to me. Now you're probably wondering what power settings I have because both of these are on battery. I have them set to automatic. And the reason that I have it set to automatic is because that's the general setting that most people would be utilizing. If we go and set it into high power, high power is going to improve the performance, but it's going to decrease the battery life substantially. And I don't know if you can hear that at this point, but these machines are running the fans. The M1 is definitely running the fan a lot harder than the M3, but I could still hear a little bit of the M3 fan running as well. All right, we have less than 30 seconds remaining on the M1, and we just crossed the 30 second mark on the M3. This is really interesting to me that both of these machines are not rendering any faster than each other. They're basically neck and neck. This is not what I was hoping for. So I hope when we do our final cut test that there's a substantial difference there because I do edit a lot of times in final cut as well. All right, and the M1 has finished and the M3 is about to finish right now. So that was so close, you guys. That was really too close for comfort. You know, considering this machine is a couple years newer, all these are updated, software is updated, Premiere Pro is updated, and both of these laptops were updated to the latest version of Mac OS, which is Sonoma 14.1.1 right now. And this, of course, has 64 gigs of RAM, whereas the M3 has 128. So let's go ahead and open up Final Cut hit return and see which one opens up Final Cut faster. Looks like the M3 is ahead and we are finished and ready to play. And the M1 was not too far behind that. This is footage out of a DJI Inspire 3. And this is ProRes footage out of a DJI Inspire 3. Both of them playing back really smoothly, not seeing any 
issues there as far as playback. Everything is looking really good. So let's prepare for a file render test. We are going to render these out at Apple devices 4K. You can see both size files are exactly the same. We'll put these in the downloads folder and we will hit go right now. They are starting and I'm going to open up as soon as they start here the Explorer so that we can see percentage. And so let's just see we've got 12%. 15 over here, 21, 21. Gosh, these are pretty close, neck and neck. They're about halfway done here, halfway done there. This is insanely close, you guys. The performance is insanely close here on both of these. It's gonna be whichever one gets to 100% first, it's gonna be a very close call. I think the M3 is just barely going to edge it out. And the M3 just finished, and the M1 just finished basically at the same time, guys. That is indistinguishably different. You can't even really tell. You you could not say that one was really faster than the other because there could be just little issues there. So that's pretty crazy. The differences between the two is so minuscule there, you guys. All right, now we're going to export 145 high resolution images that were shot with the Sony A1 out of Lightroom. So rendering out photos is definitely leans more on the CPU. It definitely used the GPU as well, but we can see that the M3 is significantly ahead, getting close to being almost done. We've got a lot of peak utilization here. Things are looking better than they did when we were running these tests with video editing. And the M3 just finished right now with the M1 uh, just over halfway complete. So the M1 is still continuing to go. And now the M3 is starting to spin back down as far as utilization goes. So when it comes to photo editing and photo rendering, the M3 definitely much better results with the photo editing than with the video editing. And the M1 just finished, and now it is starting to spin down as well. Let's take a look at our battery usage. We have 77%, 75% it just dropped down to on the M1, and we are at 78% on the M3. So that's not a big difference on battery life considering the fact that the M1 is two years old and according to the battery monitor says that it is only operating at 90% of the battery rather than 100% whereas this brand new M3 obviously has 100% of the battery to work with. So wow, not a big difference as far as battery life. Definitely not a big difference as far as video editing, but a decent difference as far as photo editing goes. Well guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. In my opinion, I'm not seeing a big enough value add for the M3 over the M1 as far as performance goes with video editing. Now this could be because some software is just not yet optimized. There hasn't been an update to Final Cut Pro, and I don't think there's been a very substantial update to Adobe Premiere since the M3 was launched. So there could be performance improvements yet to come. But as far as raw performance on the software as it is, the M3 does not seem to provide a whole lot more value, except for when I do exports in Adobe Lightroom or with things like loading software, like when I open my web browser, when the computer restarts, things like that. But those differences aren't substantial enough to me to justify the added cost. The only other variable would be the fact that the M1 is getting a little bit older and I could sell the M1 and get back a pretty good amount of money from my initial investment, having not lost a lot on the M1 because it's such a great laptop. Whereas if I held onto it for a couple more years and perhaps waited for the M5, the M1 would be so old that it wouldn't be worth nearly as much as it would be if I got rid of it now. So is retaining that resale value going to be enough for me? That's something that I'm going to have to consider over the next several days as I get closer to the end of my return window for the M3. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'm definitely starting to see a lot of people talk about the fact that there just isn't a big enough difference between these two devices, even considering the M3 is a couple years newer. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you back in another one soon.